it, it said that her final destination was to go to Canada. So yeah. <laughs> I understand my confusion. I thought we could have been Canadian. Then why do you have a ticket to Montreal? Because I could not read. The company's agent told me to go to Canada, said it was best for me to go there. Leah Michelle is at Ellis Island, trying to get to the bottom of where exactly her father's family was from. She's just made the surprising discovery that her great-grandmother, Benuta Visi, was a widow when she came to America, before she married Leah's great-grandfather. So maybe she had a younger marriage uh -huh. and in her country. It's possible. So the next three columns are nationality, the next is race or people, and then the next is country, and they all say Greece. Uh -huh. And then the city or town is Salonika? Yes. So this is interesting to me that she lists Greece as her home, you know, her country and her race, where in the census records it stated Turkey twice and Greece only once. And both may be right. Salonika was controlled by the Turkish Empire okay. and it only was considered Greek after 1912. Got it. So then we're moving on to the next column and it says final destination, Montreal. Yes. Wait a minute, but wasn't she trying to get to New York? Well, the ship was coming into New York, but when they asked her what was her final destination, she did claim that she was going to Montreal, Canada. Okay. But I know that they end up living and settling in New York. New I've York. never heard anything about Canada. Mm. Oh, wow, this is so interesting. It says whether going to join a relative or friend, and it says here, bridegroom, Moisha? Moisha. Moisha yes. VC, mm -hmm. Montreal, Canada. And this person underneath has no relation to my family. That's right. That's from the next passenger. Okay, so who's Moisha? Well, you had mentioned that your great-grandfather was, was Morris. Morris. Yes. People of Jewish faith, when they were recorded on the manifest documents, their, their Hebrew names were written. So Moisha is my great-grandfather, Morris. That's right. So she left the port of Genova coming from Greece, which originally was Turkey. Correct. <laughs> yes, you have Gets it. on a boat and goes to Montreal to meet my great-grandfather Morris. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, but his last name was VC. His last name was VC. yes. I'm yeah. so confused. Yeah. They have the same last name. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. she married within her own family? It, it is possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So let me look at these next columns. In this column over here, it says able to read or write. And in both columns, it says no, and it's circled. Are they asking if she can read and write in English, or are they asking if she can read or write it all in her own language? In her own language. OK. A year before her sailing, there was an act of Congress in 1917 that any immigrants coming to this country had to read and write in their native language. Wow. You get here and you're in, an, in a whole new country and you can't read and you can't write and I'm at, I, I can't even think about what that must have been like and, and felt like. Yes, and I don't know if you can see this. There's a letter there. Can you make it, it out C? at all? It's an S, I think. Oh, it's think. an S, okay. S-I. And that says special inquiry, meaning that she's being held here for further investigation and inquiry were the conditions really bad here? Well, certainly the conditions on Ellis Island were not lavish. Right. And actually, there is a ranger to begin taking you through the experiences of Benuta in this building. My great-grandmother came to Ellis Island and was uh, detained here for being unable to, to read and, and write, and I was so interested to follow in her footsteps. She's being detained. She would be whisked up here to one of the dormitory rooms. We have one that's set up like it was then. Really? Mm-hmm. This is one of the 12 dormitory rooms. Three-tier bunks, not very big, as you've seen. Right. 27 people in this particular room. Wow. Coming from being on a boat, and that probably was so claustrophobic as well. Mm -hmm. Now, she'd be held here until her hearing while okay. they were trying to figure out what to do next. This 
So this is one of the hearing rooms. Wow. Your ancestor would have sat on a bench like this, maybe this exact bench. Wow, that's pretty unbelievable. So you can sit on it if you'd like. She would have faced a board of special inquiry of three immigration inspectors and an interpreter for her language. They might have called witnesses. And they would have questioned her back and forth. Oh, wow. And then decided whether to let her in or not. Even being in this location, you don't really stop and think in these places that of all the people that were there before you, but that it might have even been someone who, you know, got, paved the way for you to make it there. Unbelievable. So uh, I've pulled out some excerpts here, and I think they'll answer some of your questions. Okay. So why don't we start with this document right here. Before a board of special inquiry held at Ellis Island, New York Harbor, New York, the names of aliens, and it has Benuda, BC, 28, female, June 1st, 1918. So she was, that was the day of her hearing? Yeah, this, this is a okay. transcript of the hearing. So she had her hearing within a day of arriving Right. Okay. Name and age as above, traveling alone, born in Soloniki, Greece, where I l always lived, where I have my sister Esther in good health. Oh, this is her speaking. This is her speaking. So it's, of course, you have to remember it's through an interpreter, but you are really, you're hearing her. Oh, so her, we're hearing her story. Her talk. Yeah. Okay. How long is your intended husband in this country? Two years. Has he ever been married? No. Have you ever been married? Yes. I was married to my intended husband's brother, Elia. Wow. Benuda. So this is not that uncommon back at this time, especially in Jewish communities. According to Torah law, the surviving brother of a deceased man was obligated to marry his brother's widow. It was a long-held Jewish tradition known as Yibam. Okay. Is your intended husband a resident of Montreal? No, of the United States. Yesterday at Ellis Island, it, it said that her final destination was to go to Canada. So yeah. <laughs> I understand my confusion. I thought we could have been Canadian. Then why do you have a ticket to Montreal? Because I could not read. The company's agent told me to go to Canada, said it was best for me to go there. So what probably happened is that she was gonna say that she was gonna go to Montreal, not really coming here to be an immigrant, and therefore hoping to get around the, the Literacy Act. Okay. Oh, look. Here comes Morris. Yep. <laughs> this is my great-grandfather. He enters the story <laughs> now. He probably would have gone there to, to meet her. What is your name? My name is Morris Vesey. Did you ever live in Canada? No, but I had intentions of going there. Yeah, okay, Morris. Right? That's right. No, he's just trying so, to... Playing along with the playing story. Playing along with the story. Yep. He's a good guy. How are you employed? By the Mitchell Tire Company, getting $25 a week. Have you any savings in the bank or elsewhere? Yes, shows $400. He's able to save quite a bit of money right. uh, as a laborer. When did you expect to be married? Today. They would, have, they would have to have been married to get off the island. Okay. Now this is being directed to Bonita. Being unable to read, the board denies you permission to enter the United States. Have you any further statement to make? Do as you please, she answered. Yeah. The alien is unanimously excluded as a person unable to read, excluded, and ordered deported. 